Good morning. Is it still morning? Yeah, just about. Good morning. Today's Sunday. Um, I'm pretty much decided to just do these at the moment, weekly, and this thing actually happens. Um, because the last one got two views, so I should do them weekly and then play it for you from there. Uh, right, okay, today's gripe. Oh, this week's gripe. Where do we start? Well, the landing is um, being fixed at the moment still. Um, despite having a new windscreen wiper motor put in and God knows what else, there's still nothing's working. So Wednesday, it's going to be looked at by an auto electrician. So we'll keep our fingers crossed that he can sort the problem out. Because poor Tony, I think he's at his end with it. So we'll see what happens. Um, been keeping notes as to what I want to have a good moan about. Um, first of all, all this hype about the Labour Party and Jeremy Corbyn at the moment. Been doing a lot of reading and what have you, and a little bit of research into all of this. I think what people don't seem to realise is that just after the Second World War, we led the way this country in jet technology. No one could beat us. We we actually was at the forefront of it, thanks to Frank Whittle and his his team and everything else and we we was the dogs going ahead said it. And um everybody wanted to buy into it and we said no no this is ours, this is ours. Then the Labour Party got in and the Russians said can we buy a jet engine from you? And we said, oh, no, sorry, you can't. No, no. And the Americans said, don't sell it to the Russians. They're the future enemy. Don't sell it to the Russians. And the Labour Party needed money because the country after the war was a bit skint. And uh, the uh, Russians come back and said, we'll, we'll pay a lot of money for it. You know, we, we just want a, a jet engine from you. And it was like Rolls Royce was the producer of the best jet engine at the time to know, I believe. Anyway, um so the Labour Party said money, 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 yeah okay then. And but only on condition that you don't use it for anything other than civil aircraft. Mustn't be used for military purposes. And the Russians with their fingers crossed behind their back, etc etc said um no no as if we would no 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 definitely not definitely not. Then one year later came the first MiG powered by a reverse engineered Rolls Royce jet engine. The Americans went quite rightly apeshit and said, You idiots, etc. Anyway, at the same time, we was producing the uh, Comet, the first jet airliner. It could cross the Atlantic in a fraction of the time of the props. And everybody wanted to buy into that. Boy, this is like really, really good. And uh, we said, yep, yeah, okay, they're up for sale. And we had contracts from a lot of the major airlines, all within the NATO, not inside the Warsaw Pact. And uh, America said, no, you can't do that. No, no, look what happened with the last time with the Russians. So we said, no, 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 we're, we're not going to sell it to the Russians. It would be so with loads of conditions that only our engineers can work on it, British engineers. All the spares should be kept in Britain. Everything will all have to be done. All the services have to be done in Britain and by British engineers, etc. Americans said, no, no, you can't sell them. End of. Told me, do not buy them from the Brits. Three months after that, they bought their own one out and sold that. So, crafty Americans. Right, then the Tories got back in and we got on with our... We had the best RAF in the world, like the best Air Force in the world, and the best heavy thing, the best army. We were leading the way with, all, with our fighter jets, and then the, we went into the Cold War, and as you know, we had the, the, the three bombers. Okay, um, carrying on where I left off a few days ago, uh, due to circumstances beyond my control, I got called away then, and etc., uh, etc. Et and the rest is history, as they say. So, right, so I was uh, so I had the three bombers, which were the three V's. Um, and uh, we had the, again, they were the best in the world, etc., etc. And the 
RAF said, right, well, hang on, we're lagging behind a bit here with jet fighters. Can you do something about it? So, away they went to their pens and paper and come up with this new jet fighter. And again, it was going to be the dogs going ads. It was going to be the best in the world because this is what we were good at. And we was going to engineer this and build it and sell it to the rest of the world and make loads of money. Meanwhile, we've got a general election coming up in this country. And Harold Wilson, standing for the Labour Party, said, no, I will stop all of this research and intermilitary and everything else. And the money will go into the NHS and into transport. And he said, uh, where we heard this before? Um, and so on. And you lot think it's all new these days. Well, trust me, it's just been going on for so long now. Every time it's an election. Um, anyway, yeah, so the Labour Party got in and... Lo and behold, they didn't spend the money on the NHS and road building and transport infrastructure. It got spent, the plans for the jet fighter was, that was chucked to one side and the money got spent on ground to air missiles and intercontinental ballistic missiles and, you know, because that's the future. Um, and it, as we all know, it bloody wasn't. Um, so yet again, the Labour Party had destroyed this country. So, fast forward all them years, and Tony Blair comes in. All what he's gonna do, our soul shit bag that he is, was still is, hate him, can't stand him. And I voted for him beginning. I thought that man was gonna be the best things in sliced bread. What a gullible person I was, and with billions of the rest of us. Anyway, um, he then took us into an illegal war, in uh, first of all in Af Iraq and in Afghanistan. And what did he do? He cut them out of money going to the troops and we ended up with shit equipment. And again, loads of soldiers got killed. In come the Tories and the Tories say, no, I'm not a Tory person, far from it. But along come the Tories and said, no, 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 we can't have this. And money got spent and we, yet again, we started to become the best army in the world. But as history always proves itself, um, they... Uh, they go back on their word halfway through and start bloody cutting back on everything. And yet again, we're being investigated for crimes against the Irish. Uh, flaming stupid, can you hear? Um, and on top of that, what else that Blair did was he, he took away something that was very, very dear to the British Army and took away individual regiments and corps. Did away with the RCT, like the Royal Corps Transport, the Royal Engineers, amalgamated them all into one. A lot of regiments went, a lot of the individual things went, like the um, Queen's went, the Queen's Regiment, um, and all of them, well, also artillery went, pretty much, just to save money, because he wanted us to be like the Americans, because we're the only country in the world that has corps like we do, like the Royal Air Force, and different things in the Army, like the Royal Artillery, the best, the Gunners, we are the best. You beak, etc. Um, and that was that, really. That's how the Labour governments have destroyed everything this country stands for. And you people want to put them back in again. You believe what Corbyn said. The problem is nowadays with general elections and the snowflake generation, they see it like they do the X Factor. And Britain's got whatever it's got and all them crappy, stupid reality programmes. And you vote one in and the rest go out or whatever it is. And that's what they, they look at it. They're not voting for a, a political party. They're not voting for what that party stands for. Corbyn at the moment is the best thing since I bet because he appeals. He went to um, uh, that festival, um, whatever it's bloody called, I don't know, and stood there on the centre stage. And uh, come on, how's that being a bloody politician? I mean, you, you look at his history, he was part of the IRA. Christ's sake. Anyway, enough about that one. And another thing, what I want to know is, where did all this come in from when you've got middle-aged old women wearing the latest gym lycra? Oh, come on, darling, you sacky arses and everything else. You've probably never seen the inside of a gym since you was at school. But you go shopping, all the latest gym gear. Oh, where did this come from? Who started this off? Oh, yeah. See if I really need to know. Your wags and your Z list celebrities. They go shopping it, don't they? The difference is they go to the upmarket um 
clothes shops. They don't go to Primark and Tesco's with it, wearing it all. Um, and I've got that here, uh, Tesco's. And the only thing I've got to talk about supermarkets is, what is it with people got to, Women mainly will leave their bags or their shopping trolley in the middle of the flaming aisle while they go and look at something. What's the matter with bringing the shopping trolley across with you? Out of people's way, even while you pop your shopping bags and anything else in your basket so people don't fall over it. It's bad enough for sell stackers leaving things in the way about flaming shoppers doing it. And you start thinking about other, stop being so flaming selfish people. Start thinking about other people, heaven's sake. Anyway, that's um, enough of this little short one. I'm just going to quickly edit this and upload this one now. And then I'm going to work on yesterday's one of the Land Rover being that up to date with the Land Rover. And I think a lot of the future stuff, apart from my friends, going to be a lot of it. Hopefully, either about the Land Rover, a bit more about that in the next video. Bye for now.